Good evening and welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting. Um, people would uh, turn off their cell phone please and please join me to say the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Lynn Baker is absent tonight due to a family illness, and I'd ask Pam to sub in first, so you please call the roll. I sure will. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Branstead. Absent. Secretary Baker. Absent. Uh, Treasurer Singer. Here. Uh, Member Frizzi. Here. Member Gordon. Here. Member mm -hmm. McFarland. Here. Thank you, and we have a quorum. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the consent agenda. For those who have the agenda in front of them, you can see all the items. I'll just briefly go through them. Uh, hire of, uh, of, of two professionals, the resignation or retirement of, of five uh, of our employees, uh, a bid package that's part of the uh, bond, mill bond issue for the demolition of Cook, Parkdale, and Mills, which includes a lot of asbestos abatement is on there. Um, we have bids for MPS bus garage, some, some fix-ups of some uh, equipment we need there, and approval of payment of the systems bill for September, and legal invoices of $240 and $637. Are there any additions or extractions you would like from the consent agenda? If not, is there any discussion on the consent agenda? See, none will move into a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We didn't, we didn't move. Oh, I'll move that we adopt the consent agenda, agenda items 2.1 through 2.7 as itemized on the uh, written agenda. Today. Thank you. Second. And Patrick has a second. I apologize. <laughs> now, any other discussion? <laughs> and Mike, I, I would, could you comment on the demolitions in terms of how the bids went? Yep. Um, two low bids two fairly high bids, and so uh, the lowest bidder did get it, and it was Berline Inc. of Midland, so that was nice as well. The second bidder was from Bay City, um, and so the bids were under what we had budgeted as well, so we were, were trending in a good situation there as well, so, and that demo will begin uh, probably early December, and I think Mills might be the first one. And another comment uh, from FFO meeting was one reason Central's classrooms aren't being dem demolished as part of this package is a much more complex situation as you're extracting those structures from the structures we're leaving. So it's a, it can be a different bid package because it's got to have some semi-construction behind it to kind of have bare walls, et cetera, et cetera. And that's okay. out for bid right now. Yep. Okay, any others? That said, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We'll move on to Board of Education matters, and I'll turn it over to, to Mike. Yes. I think uh, we have Jefferson Middle School here to talk about their very recently opened up nature trail that um, some of our teachers headed up, and I'll let him introduce his staff. I'll try not to adjust it. Thank you uh, very much for the uh, introduction, and also uh, welcoming us to your board meeting. I want to thank Mr. Bryan as well because he was at our, our uh, opening last week and we had a great write up in the middle of the line. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I do want to introduce four teachers that will be here and they're going to do a presentation on our outdoor classroom. We have Claudia Warren, we have Jane, Jane Camaletti, Jen Lehman, and Christy Gayhart. So they'll be coming up. tell you about our collaboration on the building of our new Jefferson Nature Trail on our school property. A few years back we all had a vision that we could turn this wooded lot next to our school property into a learning, an interactive learning center. And we were given the opportunity to turn our vision and to put it into action. Last year Mrs. Warren and I, we wrote a, a grant to develop a nature trail with an outdoor classroom. And Mrs. Gayhart and Mrs. Lehman also wrote a grant, and theirs was to learn more about native plants and to build the biodiversity and to add and to increase the biodiversity of the nature trail. This was all made possible through the Gerstacker Foundation, and we would like to extend our thanks and gratitude to them for making this possible. 
and for making the Nature Trail a reality for our teachers, students, and the community to learn more about nature and to explore and get a better appreciation of the environment around us. And now we'd like to show you a short video which reviews our project from start to finish and thank all the people who were a uh, part of making this project. springtime. He's also looking at, there's several different trees, different stands of trees. There's mature pine and then there's also some kind of dogwood and shrubs on the outer side too. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it from different ecological perspectives. So he's been doing that with his glasses. Great. They went out there and they um, marked the poison ivy with flags and <laughs> the kids have learned a lot about identifying plants. And from that, the Students who really like nature were inter showed some interest in having a nature club, and so did some of the students in my homeroom. 
and so we started a little Thursday after school nature club. So I think it's sort of brought together a lot of ideas and you know, um, it's kind of a catalyst for focusing on nature projects. Great. When did the project begin? <clears throat> It began, This it all happened really in a two month time frame because oh, wow. we started, we wrote the grant in September of last year. And then what happened is now it's winter. And so really you couldn't go out, everything mm -hmm. was frozen. I had to take some of my students out and we couldn't do anything with the mulch, mm -hmm. it was so frozen solid. But by April to May, everything came together. People were really out there to help and support. We had like Mr. Halloran in his World of Technology classroom. They actually designed and made the benches. That was all done in a, in a couple of weeks. And actually um, just putting all the mulch down in the city of Midland, donating mulch and also the um, maintenance and lawn service actually coming. Midland um, uh, maintenance coming down and, and using excavation and, and actually plowing it and the students were involved and we had students digging mm -hmm. um, Swarn and I we bought some native plants to attract birds and we had our students out there digging and planting <coughs> everyone really came together and it's just a really nice collaboration of everybody helping I got that short, really in two two months it mm -hmm. all came together I got that sense from the video that everyone really enjoyed the whole project. I thought it was so nice to see everybody involved in everything and putting it all together from start to finish. And the, and the students and staff, everyone's very excited about it. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is nice. You need to come out and see it. So then, were you able to use it? Were the students able to actually, was it done, I mean, in the spring, or was it more the, this the, fall? That you The benches were there, the classroom was done, but it was more like this fall okay. that people are really, and especially after we did the ribbon ceremony, too. Mm -hmm. And you've had such a beautiful fall to use it. That's wonderful. Yeah, I bet. It looks beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> Will the class be primarily for science, or do you see it used in uh, other areas? We've had teachers taking kids out just to read, just students out to read and enjoy. Any, any plans, thoughts, or ideas on, on winter use? Mm -hmm. Oh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we, we could. A lot of interesting things happen in the winter. Yes, we could. <laughs> Any others? Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very thank much. You very and thank much. everybody who was involved very much. Back to you, Mike. Our next presentation is our shining stars, and we have two that we're going to honor at the same time. So if Luann and Amy would come up, we have Luann Benziger and Amy Hutchison. And I'll read a little bit about them while they're coming up. Luann Benzer and Amy Hudson have been nominated by the same person for the Shining Star Award and have been chosen as our October Shining Stars. Let me tell you a little bit about them. Mrs. Luann Benzinger earned her Bachelor's of Science degree from Western Michigan University was a science major and elementary education minor. In 2003, Luann earned her Master of Arts degree in school principalship from Central Michigan University. Luann began her middle public school's career as a kindergarten teacher at the Woodcrest Elementary School in 1991. During her during her teaching career at Woodcrest, she also taught first and third grades. In 2010, Luann joined the MPS administrative team as the English Language Arts World Language Curriculum Specialist. Last year, Luann's position was changed to Curriculum Specialist for Elementary Instruction. She does a great job of overseeing all core subject areas, leading professional development, overseeing IBPYP, and much, much more for all for all seven of our elementary schools. Luann always has a smile on her face and an encouraging word for a core worker and can-do attitude that makes things happen. Supervisor Mrs. Bensinger have commented Mrs. Bensinger brings a work ethic to the curriculum office which is unmatched. She is the driving force behind the IBPYP implementation in the middle of public schools. She is always willing to take on new assignments and new efforts. Luann Bensinger continues to go be the go-to person for MPS. She's a great source of information for parents and colleagues. And now on to Amy. Mrs. Amy Hutchison earned her Bachelor of Science degree in journalism from Central Michigan University. She earned a Master of Arts degree in school guidance from Central Michigan University in 1991 and her Master of Arts degree in humanities in 2003. Amy began her Midland Public Schools career 
as an English teacher and a focus advisor at Midland High in 1986. In 2001, Amy joined the MPS administrative ranks as the English and Foreign Language Department head at Midland High School. In 2005-2006, Amy was responsible for the inception and implementation of the International Baccalaureate Program at Midland High. In 2010, Amy began her present position as an assistant principal at Midland High. Supervisor Mrs. Hutchison has commented, Mrs. Hutchison is a truly a team player whose priority is kids and their academic success. Amy is one of the most focused, detail-driven people I know. Her commitment to Midland High is amazing. Amy is a team player and is always, always ready to step up when someone needs help. She is an outstanding thinker and problem solver. She has dedicated professional life to Midland High and is tireless at trying to improve it. These MPS administrators were nominated for the Shining Star Award by a colleague. Among her comments, the staff member wrote, Amy and Luann were instrumental in the planning and carrying out of the successful exchange visit with educators from Chongqing, China. They met regularly with their partners from SVSU, formed a committee for support, and thoroughly planned each activity for a two-week visit. They sought out ways to highlight the entire community and give our visitors a first-class experience from beginning to end. Our new friends from Chongqing had a true American experience thanks in large part to the work of Amy and Luann. In addition, they also took the lead in transporting and hosting the group while also doing the day job. Congratulations to Luann and Amy on being named the October 2015 MPS Shining Stars. By the way, one for you. Thank you. you get to shake everybody's hand at the board, too. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. This way. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know how I feel. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Lou Ann may have got it for the PYP, but she gets it for putting up with my little kids when they were first at Woodcrest. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, folks. Okay, we'll move into curriculum instruction assessment. We have uh, committee meeting minutes by Lynn, but she's absent, and I believe Patrick is going to bring Correct. those forward to us. Correct. We met Monday, September 21st, uh, 1.45. Lynn, myself, uh, Pam, Mike, Brian, Cynthia and Penny Miller Nelson um, <coughs> were in attendance. Um, regarding the SAT transition and MPS plan, Penny Miller Nelson shared information on the transition from ACT to the SAT as a primary component of the 11th grade state assessment. Highlights of the presentation included uh, one, the director of the Michigan SAT will facil facilitate a staff training and parent session uh, on October the 8th and 9th, which happened already. Uh, number two, to allow for longitudinal data and student preparation. MPS will facilitate age-appropriate tests from the SAT suite of assessments from 8th to 11th grade. And number three, current 11th grade students will receive a practice SAT this fall to provide base baseline data and experience with new tests for the MDE spring assessment. Uh, topic number two, teacher evaluation system transition, uh, 5D plus. Brian and Cynthia both present information on the new teacher evaluation, 5D plus being implemented this school year. The ministry has completed 28 hours of training throughout the summer and will complete an additional 14 hours during the fall and winter. All teachers have received training from their building administrators and will continue to receive training throughout the year. 5D Plus emphasizes shorter observations on a more frequent basis with multiple inquiry cycles. The evaluation score me methodology adopted by the MPS will afford for an alignment of student growth data amongst teaching and administrative staff. Current ratios of student growth weight on evaluation scores are still being debated in the legislature. We adjourned at 3.05, uh, met again today. Those we'll minutes will be ready for next month's meeting. Thank you, Patrick. Any questions of Patrick? And I was remiss. Uh, I didn't invite the public to come to the to podium. We have no formal requests. I think that's why I was a little remiss. Um, anybody would like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll, we'll move along. Uh, we'll move to finance, facilities, and operations, and we have a com study committee report from Pam. Okay, on October 12th, 2015, uh, the September financial report and executive summary report for bond projects were available for review and questions. Mr. Cooper reviewed the following two upcoming 
insurance issues. Uh, medical stop loss as part of the process of the district changing medical coverage from being self-insured to a premium-based health plan. There will be two month period when the current medical stop loss insurance policy will expire. The district will still be self-insured and not converted to the new high deductible health plan. Our current provider will provide the stop loss protection for the two months. Liability and general insurance. The district is in the process of reviewing its liability and general insurance with our current provider. With all the bond work happening at this time, the importance of staying with our current provider was explained and discussed. The Northwood appraisal of the Midland Public School property behind H&H Dow. The appraisal of a portion of the property the district owns behind H&H Dow High School along the future expanded Sugnut Street was presented for discussion and possible next steps. A bond update, Mr. Dumbrow from Barton Mallow reviewed and awarded recommendations for the building demolition of Mills, Parkdale, and Cook Elementary Schools. The project will be awarded to Berlin Companies for a total of $522,000. This is under the project, this is under the Project, project budget by $173,200. The next FFO meeting will be Monday, November 9th at 5 o'clock. Any questions? Just one. Could you read that part about the property behind Dow High School? Just one more time. I, I missed part of that. Sure. The appraisal of a portion of the property the district owns behind H.H. Dow High School along the future expanded Sugnet Street was prevented for discussion and possible next steps. Thank you. So Yvonne, that property's on the very back side. Jerry and I walk, in fact, I'm gonna talk about it in my um, uh, my comments at the yep. end of the meeting. So I'll explain it a little okay. further. Yeah, it's yep. almost orphan property. If you look at how Sugnet's gonna go through. Oh, okay. <coughs> <coughs> okay, thank you, Pam. No other, any other questions? And I'll turn it over to Ms. Cooper. All right, uh, tonight under 6.2, we have for your information, eight items, eight gifts, totaling 5,000. $404. You'll notice out of these eight items, a lot of them are coming from our parent groups, all the way from our Northeast Music Parents, Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee, uh, Chestnut Hill PTO. You'll also see that we have uh, uh, $1,000 for Dow High Debate, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Alan Ott, and that's matched from the Gerstacker Foundation. And then you'll see our athletics teams again and robotics team working with Dow Chemical and the Community Gives Funds. Um, for earning money that way for $1,000 for each of their programs. That's just for your information. I do have some gifts, though, that require your approval. So under 6.3, you'll notice three items, a uh, total of $41,124. Uh, the first being $6,433 for instrument lockers for the band. Uh, that comes from the Dow High uh, Band Boosters Club. You also notice $23,726 for new uh, scoreboards for the Midland High or from the Midland High School Athletic Boosters Club and also $10,965 for teacher wish, wish list items for Woodcrest PTO. And because of the amounts of money involved, those require board action. Can I have a motion on 6.3? Can we can have a discussion. I move we accept 6.3, the gifts totaling $41,124. Yvonne, so moved. Do I have a second? Second, second by, by Scott. Um, any <coughs> question or comments? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Ver all of them very impressive. Yes. yes. Thank very. you very much. Any others? Looking forward to seeing that new scoreboard in Midland. <laughs> <laughs> See all the working numbers and really know what score it is. I think ball game is. And then, uh, boy, $10,965 for uh, Woodcrest teachers. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So uh, kudos to all the uh, clubs for what they can give. With that, we'll move into a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? The ayes have it, thankfully. You know, I add to the Midland, um, the Dow boosters really helped us out. The band grew so large, we had to yes. add lockers, and it was something we had not planned for, so the booster stepped in and, and made that happen. So, Growth is a wonderful thing. Also have item 6.4, um, kind of a follow-up of one of the gifts. So you'll see for action, we now need to purchase those scoreboards and 
they, they wanted to move on those so they can get them installed during the break between uh, fall and winter seasons. So you'll notice that they've turned around and they've uh, done their work and they've found the scoreboards they want to purchase uh, from Bactronics for a total of $23,726. And again, that requires board action. Accept a motion for the bid. I motion to approve item 6.4 for the purchase of the scoreboards. Moved by Pam, support by Patrick. Uh, any discussion, uh, discussion or questions? I have none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, the last item I have for you, 6.5, is the stop loss insurance <coughs> we talked about at FFO. Um, as you know, um, we've been self insured for a long time, and stop loss is there to protect you from excessive uh, cases as they come along. Uh, for some way, way back when, uh, that runs on a November 1st uh, deadline and not the same time as the plan year. So we're getting close to that again. And even though we're switching to a high deductible uh, premium-based program, we're going to still have the months of November and December where we're self-insured before we switch over on January 1. And thus, we still need the stop-loss insurance. Um, since it is a very short period and uh, to use stop loss insurance, it has to not only be incurred during those two months, but it also has to be paid for during those two months. You'll notice that we, with the proposed two month contract that we're going with, you'll see a decrease in cost. But I also wanted to point out to you that the deductible is higher. But when we looked at the situation every way we could, we thought this allowed it good protection still uh, and helped us cut some of the costs. Because like I said, the two months is a short period of time both in, incur it and, and have to pay for it. So uh, this seemed like a nice in-between uh, amount to go for. And so you'll notice it's the same provider, and they're just, uh, they don't really extend. It's a uh, contract that we'll enter with them, and then when we hit January 1, we just stop that part of it. So that requires uh, board action also to put that. I'll take a motion and second, and we'll have a discussion. I move to uh, approve item 6.5 for the stop loss insurance coverage. A second. I'll support that. <clears throat> second by Yvonne. Uh, question or comments? Yeah, I thought it was a good move to increase the deductible for such a short period of time uh, to save a little bit there. And I felt like um, it, it's, we're still making sure we're covered. So um, I'm very pretty, comfortable with that. Pretty much my comment. One thing as a board member I'm concerned about is making sure we're don't have catastrophic results to our finances because of <coughs> some unforeseen incident and just covers that part of that risk and uh, saving a little money on a deductible by taking 50,000 more risk on a, a premium, 50,000 more risk on a deductible is prudent, but the major story is we're covered for the two months. So I'm very pleased with that. Any others? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Move to human resources, and I believe, Scott, you have a committee report. Yes, I do. We had a human resource study committee meeting Thursday, October 8, 2015 at 4.30 p.m. I was present along with Lynn, Jerry, Michael, and Cynthia. Um, <coughs> vaguely, uh, we, covered, we discussed an internal staffing report uh, for 2015-16. Um, the in which we reviewed the full-time equivalent uh, employees. This document reflects the staffing levels for current school for the current school year and previous four school years. Overall, the district is 41.23 total FTEs down from 2014-2015. Um, legal update: uh, Ms. Marchese informed the committee of a recent unemployment hearing. Uh, we discussed that. Uh, as far as the MCEA president, uh, Ms. Marchese informed us that effective November 1 of this year, Mr. Jerome Lombardo will be the new MCEA president for the remainder of the year due to the retirement of Vi Collins, uh, the current president. Um, Title II, Title IX, and Section uh, 504 coordinator designation, Mr. Sher appointed Ms. Marchese as the coordinator of Title IX and age discrimination, and Mr. Bruton as coordinator of Title II and Title VI, as well as Section 504 and the Equal Access Act. The coordinator was uh, vacated with the retirement of the assistant superintendent. And that was the gist of our meeting. Our next meeting date is Thursday, December 10th, 2015 at 4.30 p.m. 
Thank you. Any questions for Scott? See none. We'll move on with the agenda. I turn it back to Mike. We have several uh, retirements to announce to you tonight. We have Roberta Baldwin, paraprofessional at Seaboard Elementary, who will be retiring in December. We have Cynthia Fitzgibbon, paraprofessional at East Lawn Elementary, retiring in November. And Jennifer Gay, paraprofessional at Midland High, retiring as of January 1, 2016. And Brian Wynn, mathematics teacher at Jefferson Middle School, as well, January 1, 2016. Um, we do have a... Um, a death to honor tonight, and we have a former board member. The board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Mr. Robert J. Carter, Sr., who had passed away on September 26. Mr. Carter served as a member of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education for nine years from 1963 through 1973. Thank you, Arsene, to family, and a, a thank you to Mr. Carter for what he left us to build upon. Yeah. Um, moving on to the agenda, uh, correspondence to and from the board is listed. You'll see our scheduled activities. Uh, you'll notice the organization meeting coming up in January and the budget workshop as we go along. Uh, now it's time for the study discussion section, and I'll turn to Yvonne, and we'll start over there. Okay. I just wanted to say congratulations to Luann Bensinger and Amy Hutchinson. I think the person who nominated them said something about dedicating their professional life to NPS, and I think that sums those two up very well. Between the two of them, I figure they have like 50 years of dedication to NPS, which I think is just remarkable and outstanding, so thank you to them for everything they've done for NPS. And then also thanks to the teachers from Jefferson. I did, I'm not sure if I got all their names. Um, Mrs. Gayhart, Ms. Lehman. Ms. Warren, the other one I didn't quite get. But anyway, what a great project. That just, I um, almost felt like I was there being part of it, watching the video that they did. It just, I just felt like I could see everybody really enjoying the whole process of putting it all together and then what a beautiful fall to use it. So that was really, I thought, very nice. And uh, I think that's really all I have to say. We have two events coming up that we can all take part in, the Fiesta Hispana on the 30th. And then Music and More at Jefferson Middle School. That's always a really nice program on Thursday, November 5th. So I'm going to try to get to both of those. I think that's it. Thank you. Okay. It's Spirit Week. Midland oh. Dow Week tonight. Midland <laughs> Dow Swimming. Tomorrow night's volleyball. Friday night's football. A lot of exciting things happening. We were in the high, uh, Midland High today and saw all the decorations and uh, just excited for the students for a, a very positive um, events this week. Um, one thing that I saw uh, today that I wanted to mention is the Youth Connection magazines would be uh, the Legacy Center sending those out to all uh, middle school and high school parents and there's a lot of neat articles in that magazine uh, so I encourage parents to take a look. Um, as far as uh, the the budget and and financial I'm really uh, happy with where the the district is looking at the cash receipts from September 2014-15 um, to 15-16 we we look like we're um, increasing our income and decreasing our expenses and um, looks like we're going in a, a very positive direction so so that all looks very good as well uh, kudos to Chestnut Hill and um, the blue, being named the Blue Ribbon School. That was just uh, wonderful news for Midland Public Schools, and uh, we're very proud of that. The school, the staff, and the parents and students. Um, I'd like to just say congratulations again to Luann and Amy. They, they really do epitomize um, service to MPS and, and what we're really all about. Uh, looking forward to the MASB conference this weekend. Um, I think you're going, and, and Pat, sure, you're going yep. as well. Uh, that that should be fun and, and uh, very educational for all of us. Um, it's exciting to see more forward progress with the uh, building demolition. Um, encouraged to see the uh, low bid that came in that we were able to get a hold of from Beerline. Uh, thank you to them for uh, doing that, and. Also looking forward to get the final numbers on the, the student count. Um, so that's a, another bit of encouraging news. That's all I have, Pat. All right. Um, my few things here. The student count this week looks like some numbers look to be encouraging. I'm not going to curse it by saying what they are, but <laughs> I didn't say it. looks like we're in a good trend, so that's positive to see. Uh, 
same thing with Chestnut Hill. I'm proud Faith Lutheran School, even proud that my kids go to school there, so I have a little extra, <laughs> little extra <laughs> emphasis there, but uh, couldn't be happier with that. Mr. Renfro and staff work very hard. It's, it's good to see. Uh, Mr. Poole, the principal at Jefferson, received his PhD last week. Dr. Poole now. Oh. Um, congratulations to him for a lot of work and time dedication to get that, get that taken care of, and uh, right. it's a big accomplishment. Congrats to him. I uh, went to the Battle of the Bands showcase so it was last week, and always impressive to see. Nice to see everybody out there representing Midland well and all the surrounding areas. Uh, a little chilly, but always a good night. Uh, bands look good as always. Uh, again, Midland High today with the, another meeting, and it was nice to see the school done up and the, the, the attention to detail done with the, the temp for temporary artwork and temporary displays. There was a lot of work put forward, making that school looks like it look, look, look like it looks, and it looks very nice. Um, and again, the conference this weekend, I appreciate the opportunity to go and look forward to going and learning a whole bunch this weekend. You will learn a lot from your peers. It's, that's what I think the most learning of those things is, is your peers' stories and what they faced and how they solved them or didn't solve things. Mm -hmm. so. um, I'd like to, everything else everybody said, I'd also give a shout out to the former teachers, parents, students of Cook Elementary who had a nice little uh, get together, I hate to call it ceremony, get together ceremony at the, the school last week. Uh, had nice weather, a lot of reminiscing, a lot of teachers showing me the rooms they used to be in. Uh, sad, but uh, uh, moving on. And uh, it was great to see that people love their buildings, love their schools, love their education. And it's not a function of the buildings, it's a function of the people. And that, that, uh, that drive and that uh, feelings were very strong. It's good to see, and that's still there at MPS. Um, that's all I have, Mike. Um, we did uh, take a visit to a STEM school, as we've been talking about for a while. So that occurred this month, and we took quite a large group out there. We had um, someone from the construction manager architect firm, someone from Saginaw Valley, who's partnering with us through the STEM adventure. And um, we have people from the curriculum division, as well as a couple of building administrators, and myself attend. Um, I think we saw a lot of good things in that building. It was one of the first STEM elementary schools built. It was a um, high poverty area um, that turned out around a district um, or, or that area in the, in the, in the Champaign, Illinois area. And so they went from um, being potentially put down on a closed list and they adopted the STEM process to move them off that list. And so to see a school have that kind of academic success, and so this isn't just maybe um, we're trying to increase kids in science. They saw overall achievement gains, and so it was neat to see that. It reaffirmed a lot of our design. Um, they had many of the same things that we're trying to capture in design of our building. Um, but I would have to give uh, French Associates a tip of their hat because I think the design we have is going to be even a, the next step above uh, what the building that we saw down there. So it was, it was a good trip, and I want to say thank you to Dow Chemical because they funded that trip for us and wanted to make sure we got the opportunity to do this right. So um, that was very nice of them. Our, um, Next, a, a, um, our school's report will be out in the Midland Daily News this weekend, and so if you get a chance, make sure you have by a Sunday edition of the Middle of the Day News, Roger, so we are our, our schools in that. So, um, the cost estimate is in on our um, STEM elementary school, and as you might expect, when uh, Dale goes through all the 30 some meetings we have from user groups and we try to capture everything everybody wanted, we're over budget. That is not uncommon. So, typically, on a first design, um, you are over budget, and then you go back to the drawing table and try to figure out how you're going to get within budget. Um, there's the potential where we will scale it down and change materials and, and still be slightly over budget, but you would expect to capture some of that maybe in bid savings. And so uh, a, a good estimate would be the worst case scenario estimate. You don't want to do it the other way, and you would expect to get savings not above that cost. And so we'll see what they come up with. Um, we have a meeting again tomorrow to take a look at some of those things, but we are over budget at this point and have some work to do before. Uh, we would like to bid that project out um, early this winter, I think is the timeline on that piece. The 28 acres at Dow High that you talked about. So this discussion started last spring. I think some of you may remember that discussion. Uh, Northwood had approached us. Um, they have some interest where they're um, trying to move some student housing and redesign their campus in the long range. I don't think they have any immediate plans, but the property there was something of their interest. 
um, and it's property that we don't potentially ever seeing, but we want to, or ever using. So, but we want to go out and make sure we knew exactly what they were talking to. So I asked Jerry to go since he knew the area very well, and Jerry and I went out and met with um, their site manager and uh, the uh, president, and we took a golf cart ride out to the property and walked around on the property. Um, so quite a bit of it is wet and low. Um, it is. Uh, separated from by a woods from our property, uh, part of it's on one side of the road, and the other part would would be extend over. Am I saying that right, Jerry? No, not no, not quite. Okay. The the road, the new road plat will curve through the back. It already's cut through the back side of Dow High. Everything they want to do is on the Northwood side of the campus, but we own property on both sides because if we gave the city the right of ways to put the road through mm -hmm. five, six years ago, seven years ago, um, so it's kind of an orphan property over there that they'd like to build on. Uh, there's a good barrier between the road, if you want to think of it that way, that's going to be there and Dow High with some wooded area and a vast amount of fields. So it's really pretty physically separated and will be separated by the road. And that wooded area um, is also wet. wet so you don't of course see students crossing into that area to get to Dow High at all. And they could cross today to get to Northwood campus. It, it just there'll be a closer building at Northwood now than there would have been. It's not that deep of a property differential. So we, um, after discussing with them, we kind of uh, went back to the president and asked them to uh, figure out what they figured the value of that was. So they went on and had appraisal. He provided the appraisal to to me. Um, we discussed it in FFO, and I made a call back to the president today um, on what we're thinking the value of that property is, and we'll see where that discussion goes from here, from there. Um, it, there could be the potential we'll bring this for action in November if this all works through the way we'd like it to work through on both sides. So um, we could be looking at move, moving that piece of property to Northwood. What will benefit to them, financial benefit to us as we go forward. And Mike, I'll just read it. It's a relatively small piece of property compared to the vast Dow campus, and it is going to be physically orphaned from us with Sugnet Road going in. We would never utilize that for anything being on the other side of that street. Student count. We, uh, we heard that come up a couple times. So last week was count day. Um, we uh, last week announced to you that it looked like our unofficial FTE count was 7715. We told you there would be some movement based on part time S FTE that we get from our ESA students as well as the, the stu parochial students that we serve with um, our arts and music programs. And um, as of today, and again, uncertified still at this point, we're at 77.22, so that's movement in the right direction. I told Bob he's just got to keep moving it upward, not downward, <laughs> and we'll see, see if he can deliver on that part of it. So basically that count is um, leaving us um, very good in our budget. We budgeted at 76.29, and so that will be a significant increase in our budget. That, no matter if that holds true or not, we'll have to do a budget amendment, and uh, we'll be looking at early winter to bring you a budget amendment that would reflect that increase in revenue. Um, just one other comparison is our, our blended count from last school year was 77.35. And so you're looking at a very little difference between last spring to here. And um, we were projecting well over 100 because we were losing larger class and getting a smaller class. So we've done pretty well. Our student, our kindergarten enrollment's higher, and as well as enrollment in several other grades. So we've done very well to cover up that natural loss of students um, simply because of um, younger students being a smaller class versus the older students that are leaving. School calendar, I, I wrote to you about that. Um, I have some information that um, the Claire Gladwin School Districts, as well as the other three Midland County School Districts, may be looking to ask the governor for uh, an exemption to start school prior to Labor Day. Um, and and um, the, they're ba going to base their argument on that they are involved in an early college program that needs to line up with a community college or university calendar. Um, the s the schools that applied the previous year uh, for that exception for that reason were mostly successful. Right now we would not qualify for that and so um, if it's the board's desire, um, which I would think we may want to if the, all of the you know, surrounding districts are making changes, uh, at least to the inner county and to the north, um, we, we might want to think about that as well. Or some of our parents might question that. Um, 
getting out later part of it because so they'll get it they would get out 10 days prior or something like that to to us in our calendar so um, we would have to think about a middle, middle college program I think again to be involved or we may want to talk about the fact that our CTE programs which involve all four of us would not align as well and so we provide 90 percent of the CTE programs in the county and that could be a problem as well in common calendar so um, I think we could stand potential applying for that exception based on that as well. So um, more discussion to be held at the superintendent's level between the four of us. We have that on our agenda for our meeting next month, and so I'll bring you back more information on that side of it. And um, again, um, one last time, I would uh, remind you that S Susan Johnson has, as of today, is no longer with the school district, and um, we did need move Paul Stroll over, and they worked together for a few weeks to make sure that transition went smooth, and it has gone smooth, and Paul is sitting in the principal's chair at Siebert today instead of the assistant principal's chair at Jefferson. And we have um, moved some staffing arrangements around at Jefferson where we have um, temporarily filled that with a combination of, of um, an administrator that was doing special education and a classroom teacher who was filled in for you prior um, when you had an administrator leave a few years back. And so great opportunity for her as she gets a chance to, again, show us her skills as an administrator and a great opportunity for us to see those skills. And so and she also helped us out filling it out why we're figuring out what to do in the interim. And uh, by spring, we should know what direction we're going based on their performances. So we're in good shape at Seabird, I'm sure. So that's all I have. Any questions for Mike? <coughs> yeah, we wish Susan well. She moves on with her husband's career and, and Paul over in, in, uh, at Seabird also. So good. Anything else for the good of the order? And for student count, you know, since it's not official yet, just remember Saturday night is never over till it's over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Yogi just died, so it's all appropriate. <laughs> 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 with that, we'll stay adjourned. Stay adjourned.